Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining another VoIP Supply webinar. Uh, today, we are uh, teamed up with our very close partner, Fanville, reviewing our intercom series. My name is Brian Hyrick, and uh, I'm teamed up with my colleague today, Tommy Lee of Fanville. Um, if you want to go to the next slide here, uh, Tommy and I really want to make this as interactive as possible. Uh, so in the lower right hand corner, you will see a, um, a bubble with a queue. Feel free to uh, type in questions uh, as you go. Um, and we'll, we'll answer them all by the end of the presentation, but we'll also make it interactive and address your questions um, on the go as well. Um, next slide. And those of you who do not know or are not familiar with VoIP Supply and our partner program, uh, since 2002, we've been addressing the reseller community. And now VoIP Supply really has a good understanding of uh, what it takes to be a partner um, to the reseller community. We have a rental program uh, where you can offer device as a service to your clients. Uh, affording your clients to not have to do that big, large capital expenditure up front. Uh, complete provisioning. Um, so your Fanville phones, you can have customized with uh, custom nameplates and VoIP Supply could even uh, put any of your redirects or point uh, the phones to uh, whichever server um, you're presently using. And we can blind ship directly to your customer, even in a private label box as well. Uh, VoIP Supply does also have a, a marketplace. So if you are looking to um, become an agent and offer anything from SIP trunks all the way to full-blown cloud service or faxing service, uh, VoIP Supply can help you build up your MRR and give you some really awesome spiffs and payouts on all of that um, monthly recurring revenue. Uh, so I did uh, briefly touch upon fulfillment, but uh, VoIP Supply, we did create for the reseller community um, a portal wherein uh, you can, uh, we can hold your own private stock of Fanville phones that are custom branded to uh, your company or sometimes even your opportunity requires, uh, enterprise opportunity requires the phones to be rebranded um, with the company's logo on the phone and VoIP Supply can house that for you. And you can manage your own inventory through the portal and um, even your provisioning as well. If uh, there's different provisioning strings for um, different units on the same order, we can do that also. And on the flip side, uh, if you run into opportunities where there's some maybe, I don't know, some unwanted Yealink phones or unwanted Polycom phones, uh, VoIP Supply can um, reclaim those items and offer you some cash or your customers some cash to uh, put towards their uh, brand new, let's say, fan build phones. So with that being said, I'd like to uh, pass the torch over to Tommy Lee of Fanville. And um, Tommy, you want to take it from here? I sure can. Thank you very much for the introduction, Brian. Um, what I wanted to do today is a little bit different uh, than some of the past webinars. Uh, contrary to what I'm going to show, uh, we, you know, we have a big concentration of phones, but what we want to do is to kind of make a very easy path for our partners out there to be able to explore how do you put in one of these door access units or intercoms. And what I found out is that, um, is that, you know, VoIP Supply put together a great video that kind of shows a e very easy way to how to, how do you transition from a phone to, to an actual intercom or how, when you get an intercom, how do you go ahead and set one of these things up? And so what we've done is set up, uh, what are these units? And most of the units are kind of put together the same exact way. So as an example, hopefully when we do that, we'll kind of show this live video set up here. And as well, a uh, couple of missing gaps, and I'll show you how to do a live firmware upgrade. You know, even some of the basic things, like when you put this thing in the wall, how do you find out what the IP address of this thing is? And I'll kind of go through all that, and it's a really quick process, so I think we could fit this in pretty quickly. Um, 
moving forward, uh, this is just for a, a one slide that we're just going to kind of kind of go over the whole spectrum that Fanville provides to the marketplace. As you know, we provide uh, phones, and that's one of our large lines here. And uh, we do SIP endpoints and we, we provide so phones that really cater to business as well we also have some specialized phones that we have here that cater to the hospitality market we have really everything from soft screen phones to the classic you know hard templated hard screen desk phones here coupled with uh, even narrow phones that you could put in the bathroom or whatever auxiliary uh, rooms that you might end up finding. The funny thing is, is that with this narrow phone, it's just really a two SIP line phone. And if people are hungry for real estate, you could in essence put this phone almost everywhere outside of hospitality or wherever you would need a phone that has uh, really a, a low concentration in desk real estate. But the concentration of what we're going to do today is really focus in on the I series, which we call our intercom series. And the intercom series, we actually have both intercoms that just has a simple basic button that provides simple access. We also have door security uh, as well, which actually provides gate security as well as entrance security into it. And all of these units are SIP based. So if you know how to program a phone, you could easily do the bridge transfer over to, this, over to these units. And I'm gonna kind of give you a quick idea on how to, and by the way, the, the unit that we're gonna demonstrate today is the I-30. So not only do we have outdoor units, we also have indoor units as well with these indoor stations. Because in the past, very people put, you know, uh, some phones that are internal into the into the marketplace, and the phones, eh, you know, they're very subjective. But what we've done is put together a very nice. Uh, plate that you can put in that emphasizes who's at the door and provide a couple of quick screen buttons that you can just go ahead and press and be able to open the door if you have to and see who's there, whether or not it's the post postal person or a delivery or someone in your family. You can just easily see this and it's also aesthetically pleasing in, in, a, in a home or even a work environment. And last but not least, you have uh, public broadcasting. I mean, this is a PA2 gateway that we've actually provide uh, a way for you, our partners, to be able to convert any analog interface into working with SIP. And that could be huge cost savings, and I'll get into that in the future. But one of the things that we had that's coupled all of these units together is a cloud-based system that gives you the ability to not only just redirect, but also manage and provision all of these units into the field. So th that, that's a basically a whole encompassing solution that we bring into the marketplace. And But what we'll focus on is really how do we go ahead and set up the intercom or the door access units. So let's start with the intercoms. One of the things that you really want to think about is really having the environment. Once you realize in the environment, we actually have things that address for indoor usage, which means that these are small pieces that you can fit in in a, in a small commercial environment. Now, these are just small units that we have far more variety than what you see here. Or you can think about industrial. Is this something that's going to end up going to a marketplace that's going to have a lot of high access in a semi-internal, external environment? Or you can have total IP65 outdoor ruggedized units where you might put in this door access unit that's going to be subjected to high wind, rain, snow, etc. These have been designed to be cased in a very ruggedized design so that it preserves a lot of the electronics internally. And we have solutions that do audio only or audio and video. So it really spans across the whole spectrum, but we go ahead and give you a lot of this variety, uh, a quick snapshot that you can have moving forward. And again, these are all SIP devices. So for those who actually have a SIP-based PBX, you can pair these just like you would an IP phone, which is our most popular unit. <clears throat> Now let's walk into the indoor stations that I talked about. Again, I think having one of these mounted on a wall is far more aesthetically pleasing than having a, a, a classic telephone. So I think moving into the 21st century, you have some of these things which we, we could provide that'll provide you that quick access and quick buttons that you can provide people access to. We have a several different flavors out there, which we have the I-51 and 52W, which really the only difference between these two is a larger screen size. And so that gives you all of the screen buttons, but some may want an extended capability where you might want to have a touch screen. And then a touch screen, we give you a couple of speed dials here and that you might have a person that may want to dial more than just the front desk person. You may want to be able to put in 
whatever, Domino's Pizza, what have you, just to go ahead and speed dial these people and give you all of these at the same time. Now, coupling here on the i56A, these are all, this is just an Android-based unit. So very often in these home-based or whatever business-based units, many of these companies develop an Android client of which you can load on here. And instead of running our operating system, you could run an Android 9.0 based uh, operating system that runs their client so that you can have this interface cater to whatever application that you may want to run to it moving forward. Now I said it was wall mounted, but one of the interesting applications of this is that many people look at this as a desk mount unit because as I mentioned about the narrow band phone, what these units really are are one or two SIP line phones that you can actually make dials and call to people right here. And by the way, all of these units include Wi-Fi in the unit itself. So that really makes for a very convenient deployment application. Now let's zip over to the SIP paging endpoint. And this is a fantastic unit because very often when people go ahead and deploy phones, they end up leaving a lot of the other solutions behind. Like what do you do about the door entry system? Or what do you do about, about elevator systems here? You know, if the building is run by an elevator, that used to connect through the old analog or proprietary digital system. You can use this gateway to assign an elevator a particular extension or a DID, depends on how you want to do it, and be able to bridge and assign a SIP extension to whatever unit. This could be a parking unit here, or it could be basically a parking unit gate, as you see here, or an elevator that you see here. The great thing is about this unit is that not only can it provide audio, but it also has logic in it. So in the PA2, you can provide additional buttons so that just like our intercom system, you can actually page the front person who actually controls this gate saying, hey, my credit card is stuck, what can I do? And then they could just push a button and release the, 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 the note. I'm sure anybody who's been in the hospitality business for a long time always gets stuck, but this provides a SIP gateway into these analog based units so you could save them from being able to upgrade to IP speakers to support PA paging and everything like that. Because you can hook this thing up into power amplifiers that will give you the same type of thing. Now let's just talk about the intercom section for a moment. These intercoms here actually show one button, two button, and these things have both audio only as well as, as well as video. So we actually have many of the different models that suit your specific project needs. We have also the same models that include video intercom that actually show here. Now one gotcha that you're gonna see in the video that I have moving forward on the access unit this unit here, you can actually, what the access unit shows is that you could just plug in a device just like you would a PoE connection on the back of a phone. But on some of these small units, there really isn't space for a PoE connector. You would have to kind of take apart the, the, the PoE cable and provide those interlink connections discreetly into these units because they can be powered by PoE if you, if you need to do so. So here comes a variety that includes video. And then when you have some of the idea here on the video door phone. Today I'm gonna to do a demonstration on the i30, which is really here that provides not only just keyboard access, but you could also read RFID cards. Not only new ones, but you could also take advantage of the existing RFID cards. This, this could be a key fob that many employees out there can do and just swipe through and be able to provide instant access. And so we're gonna actually show you, show it how it actually works coupled with a one button intercom. So this kind of combines everything. We have both ruggedized units out here, coupled with what we have as a commercial unit that I, sh I show here. Now let's go ahead and move on to the film. And what we've got, what, what uh, VoIP Supply and Fanville have set up for you here is that we're gonna show a quick six minute video that's gonna really take you from taking almost taking out of the box and putting this together and how to show putting these things on and really describe how do you define how do you access it? How do you define a uh, key access here and doing these things? And we, they've done a really great job of being able to show that. And I'm gonna couple that with a live connection that I actually have here in my office that shows you how do you go ahead and do a firmware upgrade and doing all of these things. Now, one of the interesting things that I point up front is this pound key here uh, is something that you can press for three seconds. And then what will happen is whatever POE has been assigned to this unit, it'll actually Actually announce it so when you see my on-prem demo you'll see where the demonstration comes from 
So with that said, I'm going to go ahead and actually skip on over to the film. And hopefully I find this film very beneficial to you as it is uh, for me moving forward. Hi, it's Mark again. Not in the lab this time at VoIP Supply, but I'm here to talk a little bit about the Fanvil i30 door phone. The i30 is a compact device that combines a video door phone and lock control via switch, keypad, RFID card, and remote DTMF. In this video, I'm going to show you how to connect a switch and lock to the i30, and how to use an RFID card to trigger the lock. First, let's configure the i30 with an extension and the settings needed to operate the lock. For as feature-packed as the Fanvil i30 is, it's surprisingly easy to set up, and I'm going to show you how to do it quickly. First, log in with the default credentials of admin and admin. This brings you to the system information page. You can see that already I have line 1 registered. To register a line on the phone, go to line, for SIP count 1, enter your extension, a display name, authentication name, which will likely be your extension, your password for the PBX, the PBX IP address, which is a temporary system I have set up on Amazon, and click apply. If your settings were correct, you should see registered under your line status. You can have up to two accounts, but you only need one for basic operation. All right, let's set up the door lock. The EGS settings will allow us to use the keypad of the i30 or an RFID card to trigger an electronic lock. I found a basic electronic lock on Amazon and I have the phone configured in passive mode. Passive mode allows you to use PoE to power both the phone and lock. Fanville does recommend using an external 12 volt power source in active mode. These modes can be toggled with dip switches that I will show you later on. The majority of these fields are already in their default setting, but here's what I changed to make it work. I set my remote password as 5555 for testing. Local password is also 5555 also for testing. Now the difference between the remote password and the local password is the remote password can be triggered from another extension to unlock the electronic lock attached to the phone. The local password is what's entered on the keypad of the i30. Entering the local password we also configured in the i30 will open the lock for five seconds, just like the RFID card and the momentary switch. The switch on duration is how long the lock will stay open for when it is triggered. We also have a remote code check length, which is how many digits our passwords will be. And we have the card reader enabled so we can use an RFID card to trigger the lock. Let's look at how to assign a card to the phone. Under EGS access is where we will add access rules. An access rule essentially is a user with an RFID card. RFID cards can be entered manually or they can be added by scanning with the phone itself. I already have myself added with a card ID and when I tap this to the phone, I trigger my electronic lock. Here, the RFID card we configured in the web interface can now open the lock by presenting it to the front of the i30. Now to edit an existing record, you select it, make your change, click modify or to create a new one, fill out your fields and click add. Now I'll show you how to add a card by scanning it with the phone. To add a new RFID card, go back to EGS settings, change your card reader working mode to card issuing, click apply, and then tap an RFID card or key fob to the phone. Now check back in EGS access and you'll see a new ID populate. Now you can assign that by checking it and filling out the rest of the information. Then you click add. To remove the card, simply check it and click delete. An important feature is going to be the logging. If you go to EGS logs, you can now see every time someone accessed the door phone. Door lock is a quick way to temporarily trigger the lock. It should take about five seconds and it'll close. Next, I'll show you how to toggle the mode for the phone, whether passive or active, how to connect a switch and a lock. 
The Fanvil i30 can be configured in either active or passive mode. The difference is that active mode is used when powered by PoE, and passive is when the power is provided by an external 12 volt DC power supply. To toggle passive mode, you must move the jumpers to connect pins 2 and 3, which are in the center. Active mode requires 1, 2, and 3, 4 pins jumper together. The i30 comes configured in passive mode out of the box. Fanville recommends using a 12 volt DC power supply as a best practice, but for this demonstration, I'm connected to a PoE switch. It's important to know that when the electric lock is activated, I noticed 15 watts of power consumption on the switch port, so keep an eye on your PoE budget if you're using PoE. Let's talk about connecting a lock and switch to the i30. The power and electronic lock connector has eight terminals, one through eight. Terminal one is to the far left and is used with terminal two for an external 12 volt DC power supply in passive mode. If you are connected to PoE like I am, these will not be used. Pressing the momentary switch opens the lock for five seconds, which is a setting we set in the web interface of the i30. And that is the introduction to the Fanville i30 door phone and its ability to control an electronic lock. I hope you found this video informative and useful. If you did, hit that like button and subscribe. If you have any questions about the Fanville i30, visit VoIPsupply.com or give us a call. Once again, this is Mark, still not in the lab at VoIP Supply, wishing you a healthy future ahead. Take care. One of the pieces that I mentioned earlier is how do you go ahead and get an IP out of this? Um, out of this uh, door access device, you press the pound button three seconds, it'll give you the ID of which in this case, I got a 10.00.104. And what I did before here, as he did it, it's admin, admin. And again, for security, I highly suggest you go ahead and change that. So, you know, I've gone ahead and one of the things that you have to do with all of these door access devices is really doing an update in, in, in the firmware. And you could actually go to this upgrade uh, section and it tells you what's actually in the system today and you can actually click select and when you click select here's where you can actually get the actual firmware you can actually go to our support page and our download site and you will be forwarded directly to our download page of which you can then go into what we call our industry product and go to i30 video door phone right here and right here in the i30 video door phone you'll see that the firmware version is a lot higher than what it was. You would just download it. And once you download this system, you could then, you know, upload it here and select it. Now, the key thing is when you download, it will download a zip file. Don't unhook that zip file. You just put that location of that zip file right here of where that URL is. And then you just click select upgrade and it will go ahead and provide that upgrade path for you. So again, sorry about the, the video audio. I was hoping that you can hear that, but hopefully my, my narration might be able to fill in at least some of those gaps moving forward. Um, just as a, as a connection uh, by any means, this is just sort of our contacts and tools of, of, of sales support. This is actually uh, the manufacturer and myself, my own connection here, another differentiator as well as the, the technical staff at VoIP Supply. We also have Hector Zarita, who's actually our technical support person. He's actually resident on the East Coast time. So if you have any issues, feel free to reach out with us or you can reach out to VoIP Supply for whatever technical support. And here's Brian's uh, contact information here moving forward. Yeah, so, absolutely. And any opportunities too? <clears throat> feel free to contact me and we can always uh, loop in Tommy and his team and get in front of any uh, solutions um, uh, that we can provide for you, really. So even if there's a situation that you don't quite know what product uh, or if there is a product to accomplish um, a certain task, uh, reach out. We'll, we'll uh, help you out on, on all of that. I think this will probably be a good segment to get into any questions and answers that might appear out there that may have not been clear here. Uh, you know, feel free to read off whatever questions that might come in and we'll be more than happy to address it. If we can't address it, you know, we could then log in your questions and we could probably work with you one-on-one -on, -one on that. So um, the only one I'm showing here too is actually uh, regarding device management uh, for yep. intercom units.
Yes. Um, so uh, is there any device management for the actual intercom units? Yes, it's funny you mentioned that. Um, with the with the uh, management unit, let me just go back over to the next slide. We actually have um, uh, a management system here. We call it FDMCS. You can actually reach out to VoIP Supply. They can go ahead and send you a link, which is, by the way, free of charge. It's a service that Fanvo provides through our partners to, to provide to you, which gives you the ability not only to provision just our phones and intercom systems, but almost everything here. Similar to our phones, inside the uh, door access unit as well is a configuration file. And you can actually go ahead and set up the configuration files on the management system so that if you have a particular setting that you do 95% of the time before you go ahead and set up the unique extensions, you can have a management system do most if not all of the work for you in advance so that once you go out into your deployment site, you can go ahead and, and configure the redirection or whatever configurations you decide to download. And then you can have basically an out of the box provisioning from that point moving forward. If there's anything else too, you know, feel free to uh, reach out after or something um, after you digest what you've seen today, uh, something might come to mind. So feel free to bring Absolutely. it up. We, yeah, we love sure. to engage. So. Should something come up afterwards, again, reach out to both Brian or myself, and I'll be more than happy to address whatever questions that you might have out there. Tommy, thank you uh, so much for your time and sharing your knowledge and um, hanging out with us today. Uh, we appreciate really it, appreciate it. And to all of you who've joined us today, we really appreciate you taking the time out of your busy days uh, to learn more about Fanville. Uh, they're definitely the top growing brand at VoIP Supply. Uh, reminder too with their phones that uh, we can customize them to you with low, low minimum order quantities of just 25 units. Uh, you can start seeing your own company name on the phones, um, which really in my 14 years at VoIP Supply, how cool is that uh, to have such a low barrier of entry um, to that service? So. Uh, if there's nothing else, Tommy, um, I would like to say thank you again and uh, until next time. Thank you, Brian. Thank you, everybody, for your time as well. Stay healthy out there.